everybody. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning from wherever you are tuning in. Um, my name is Malati. I'm 19 years old and I will be your co-host for day 17 um, alongside Esta. Hi everyone. I'm guessing some of you are already familiar with our faces by now after 17 days, but my name is Esta. <laughs> I'm also for the Utopia team and welcome to day 17. Again, time flies. What do you think, Mal? Who would have thought? Wow, I'm, I can't believe that we're here, honestly. I'm so excited. Um, now that we're at day 17, I think we can tell everyone that's joining or has been following us for a couple days, all days. Um, if you paid close attention, a fun fact is that we actually, all the hosts from the Utopia team for the sessions, dressed according to the color of the SDGs. So today, we are of course, wearing blue for SDG 17, Partnerships for the Goal. And to be extra, I got my blue background. But um, moving forward, let's share some fun facts, shall we, Esta, about what this last 17 days have been like with some numbers. Ooh, look at that. Of course, 17 days, 17 SDGs, but we have 36 speakers, all frontline young change makers. Some of them are even, I think, if not majority of them are also members of Utopia's circle of youth. And surprisingly, I think a lot of us also notice the diversity in not only just uh, throughout, you know, the countries, but also in age. We've had members of our audience like above 30, 40, even up to 60 years old and super young. I think I see Kriti in our audience right now, right, Kriti? I think you're 11 years old, if I'm not mistaken. So welcome again. Thank you for your support. We also, we also have had 600 plus registrations. Can you believe that? No. That's no. insane. I think 600 registrations. And what's even crazier is it's all from 25 different countries. Um, that's been the most craziest, just seeing the reach and the network that Utopia has been building. Um, and we're really grateful for all of you that registered. And fun fact about the sessions, because the idea of Utopia Unite was really 17 days to match the iconic 17 SDGs, where each day we dove deeper into the specifics, the details of each SDG. So the two top registered SDGs were, can you guess it? SDG 4, Quality Education, and SDG 13, Climate Action. So it's, uh, are you surprised, Esta? I was, I was kind of like, uh, felt a strong confirmation of what we're, that we're on the right track with Utopia. Interesting, I did, okay, I agree. That's exactly what I thought, like, wow. It just so happens that, you know, again, Utopia really does take, not take pride, but that's what Utopia is all about. Again, making peer-to-peer -peer education from the young change makers in the front lines to our audience here that has been so loyal. So I guess surprised, but not so, not so surprised there with, you know, right. how quality education was, Top two with climate action. Wow, what else yeah. have we got here, Mo? Um, well, from the 25 countries, just a quick recap again of the top five countries joining in, uh, Indonesia, India, Malaysia, USA, and Germany. That I found quite interesting. I didn't expect that at all, but uh, quite uh, quite happy with the results. Awesome. I think also um, something here, Esther, that I just wanted to touch on with the last uh, statistic or like fun fact that we had was, um, in the questionnaire that we had for registration for the event, we actually asked a simple question. Are you a young change maker? The options were yes, no, or I want to become one. And over 58% of you that registered answered with I want to become one. So that even gives us again the confirmation of what we're trying to do here at Utopia to create this online community, to create this community of learners, to come together and learn from each other. I think was a really great um, achievement for us to see in the results. And um, yeah, I think what we want to do next is actually introduce you to some faces of our young and dynamic team at Utopia. So da -da 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 -on, this is the moment where we would like to introduce who is behind Utopia. Shall we start with, shall we start with Esther? <laughs> Ooh, hot potato this one. Let's yeah. do who? Who should we do? Did you call on someone, Malati? Let's do Tasia. Awesome. Hello, hello. Um, nice to meet you all, guys. Uh, I'm Tasha. I host at SDG 3 and 15. And yeah, nice to meet you all. I'm the media trailblazer of Utopia, handling the marketing and PR public relations kind of things. So yeah. Hello. 
Hi, Tasya. Um, Ria, let's kick off with you. Hello, what's up, everybody? My name is Ria. I'm 23. I'm based in Manila, Philippines. I'm the creative lead here in Utopia. And my favorite SDG is number four, which is quality education, because I believe that education can revolutionize and will change the world, which is what Utopia is doing. All right. You! Um, Maya, let's go over to you. Hi, everybody. I'm Maya. I'm 17 from Singapore right now. Um, and I'm an intern at Utopia. Lily and I hosted SDG 12. And my favorite SDG is SDG 5, gender equality. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Emma. Hey, everyone. I'm Emma. I'm 19 years old. I'm a research intern here at Utopia. Um, I hosted SDG 7 and 10, and my favorite SDG has got to be SDG 4, quality, quality education. Yep, I think you guys are seeing a trend of uh, why all of these amazing people are on our team. Arum, you're next. Hi, everyone. I'm Arum, 25 years old, speaking here from Sumatra, and my favorite, I am a researcher for Utopia, and my favorite SDG is SDG 15, Life on the Land. Awesome, thanks Arun. Praise. Hello everyone, I'm Praise, I'm 27 years old. I'm head of research and interns lead of Utopia and I'm based in Bali and my favorite SDG is SDG number two, zero hunger. Woo, Noor. Hi, I'm Noor, I'm from the Netherlands and um, I am 19 years old and my favorite SDG is uh, 15, life on land. Lily. Hi everyone, my name is Lily. I'm 18 years old and today calling in from Singapore. My favorite SDG is number four, which is quality education. And I'm also a research intern at Utopia. Okay, so guys, um, it's gonna, I'm gonna pass it to Esther and myself, but at this point, I think SDG four is both Esther's and mine as well. So, you know, just a bit of um, background. We were kind of contemplating, should we do like a group chant of like, what's your favorite SDG? And everybody's like, SDG four. So we, we, we had that vibe, but I think the team vetoed that. So um, Esther, introduce yourself and um, we'll, we'll go forward. A little bit of behind the scenes of what we had planned there. But hi, everyone. My name is Esther. I'm 23 years old. I'm a community builder here in Utopia, based in the Big Durian, Jakarta, Indonesia. And my favorite SDG has to be SG 13 of climate action. How about you, Mel? Uh, there we go. You, you picked SDG 13. And I said that I promised I would say SDG 17 was my favorite because um, I think, you know, it sets the mood for, for today's session, the very last day. Um, but my, I'm, I'm Malati. I'm 19 and I'm the founder of Utopia. I've had the incredible privilege and honor to see the team building from an idea to real faces and you know, real people. Uh, so we're very excited and grateful that um, we have all of you joining us for Day 17, let's just kind of, everybody that's on the call, like if you're here and you're just with us, just take a stretch because I don't know how many of you have been in front of a screen all day. And um, for our team, we can do a little victory dance <laughs> because we're here. We made it 17 days of Unite. Um, and we've got a, a really strong summary that we would like to dive into with everyone here on the call today. So let's go on it, share screen again, and let's start from the very beginning, day one, SDG one. What were the key takeaways? Right, so I'm gonna kick this off with SDG one of no poverty. So the first takeaway for me is raise awareness, really push education on this topic. Number two, make sure that we push both public and private sector to find and implement new innovative business models so that we can improve livelihoods on the ground. And finally, at an individual level, volunteer and help alleviate poverty. Let's do no hunger, Ria. All right. Takeaway number one, food is life. It is vital for human survival. So knowing that, knowing how important it is, it leads to takeaway number two, which is agriculture and or farming should not be equated to poverty considering our economy is heavily reliant on farmers to give us food on the table for us to eat three times a day. And finally, number three, if you have a better understanding of where your food comes from, uh, you will less likely waste it. So know where your food comes from and support local farmers. And let's go, number three, Tasia. 
Yep, SDG number three, good health and well-being. Key takeaways number one, start with yourself. Do exercise, uh, eat clean, drink more water. Number two, check in with others. Check in with are your friends with about, about their mental health and also do not, uh, do not be afraid to seek for solutions. Last but not least, free volunteer, be brave. Join the communities that are focusing on the good health and well-being causes. Number four, SDG four, Mel. That's me over here, hot potatoing it. SDG four, quality education at the heart of everything we do here at Utopia. We discussed that without education, or in fact, rather, education is the stepping stone to allow us to achieve all other SDGs, right? We've heard it already and we're only on SDG four. But um, key takeaways here, have the capability to adapt and be flexible, especially when it comes to things like technology and education. Um, we have to be reliable both as a student and as a teacher. And then last but not least, we have to build our empathy to help and support your community environment as a whole, as the bigger picture. SDG 5. That's me and SDG 5, we had Nadia, who is the founder of Period, talk about breaking the stigma because we can't reach empowerment unless we are empowering 100% of the population. So first and foremost, have a conversation about periods, normalize being a woman and what that's like. And second of all, we should always Think about buying products if we're collecting items for donation. Think about period products for girls in developing countries. And last but not least, get yourself involved in a mentorship and a community, which sticks nicely with SDG 17. And so, yeah, moving on to SDG 6. Take it away, Mel. SDG 6 means day six, and we had quite a good momentum up until here where we had our first hiccup. Our speaker did not show up on an IG live, as in it was already on live, and our speaker did not show up, but it happens, and we actually took the opportunity to engage all of you that did join us for SDG 6 to talk more about the overall purpose on Utopia and what we do. So we did actually, in the end, get quite a great um, outreach and engagement for day six. But day seven went up again with the momentum of Unite. Yes, on day seven of Unite, we discussed SDG seven, affordable and clean energy. And these are just three takeaways that you Utopians can apply in your lives. Firstly, be conscious of the use of electricity, save energy, and don't be arrogant in using your resources. No. Secondly, educate ourselves about clean energy and renewable energy, and we must be familiarized with what we can do to achieve this goal. Spread awareness within our community so we can implement these clean energy resources in our communities. And lastly, engage with the local organizations that raises awareness on clean and renewable energy so that we can also push our government to shift to clean and renewable energy sources. SDG 8, go. SDG 8, all about promoting inclusive and sustainable economic growth. Number one, educate yourself about the need for decent wages and labor rights, not just for the majority, but especially for the marginalized and disadvantaged. Number two, explore your talents and develop them into jobs or professions. And number three, youthtopians, design a change you want to see. Try to do it and share this knowledge. On to you, SDG number nine. This one was all about innovation. We really stuck out to that one. And the key takeaway here was really boiled down to one and that's start inventing. Look around you, look into your communities, find a problem that you're passionate about and start seeing how you can fix it with your strengths. SDG 10. SDG 10, we discussed reduced inequalities. And the first takeaway is to be respectful to everyone regardless of their background. Number two, if you have a skill, share it with others and learn from each other in our communities. And last but not least, protect your culture as it gives us so much social values. Next up, Lily. SDG 11, the first step, look at your surroundings. Think about the issues your community faces and what are the tangible actions that you can do, be it initiating cleanups, planting trees, or even encouraging your local youth community to work together and create change. Number two, reduce your energy consumption. Walk or cycle instead to reduce carbon emissions. And number three, reach out, write to your local government, speak up through media and join the movement or donate your money to support sustainable cities and communities. On to you, SDG 12. That's me, SDG 12. We talked about responsible consumption and production. 
And everyone has this common misconception that we need to recycle, reuse, and reduce, but we decided to switch it up and start with reducing. So everybody needs to, first of all, take a good look at themselves, what you have in your closets, your fridges, and see what you can start to reduce, what you don't need. Remember, quality, quanti quality over quantity. Second of all, get dirty, come face to face with all of these issues and start educating yourself on what you can do to responsibly consume and produce. And last but not least, do something about it, Youthtopians. This is why we are here, to learn and grow. Passing on to you, Praise. All righty, SDG 13, we discuss about climate action and the key takeaways for all of us Youthtopians are, first one, Collective climate actions are made up of individual actions. That's why small changes or small actions matter. Second one, educate yourself about what's happening on your local communities and support the movement in your area and in your surrounding communities. The third one, climate action is not only about protecting the environment, but also protecting the people who live within the environment. That's why inclusivity and collaborations matters to take part in climate actions. Next, on to you, Arum. Thank you, Pres. So SDG number 14, it's all about pro protecting our beautiful ocean. So what can you do, Utopians? First one, educate yourself and others. Start with consuming sustainable seafood, get involved in beach or river cleanups, and refuse single-use plastic products. Second one is hold business accountable for the damage they create to the ocean and support business that are ocean-friendly and pay attention to ocean conservation. And the last one is support and pass leg legislation locally and nationally that will reduce the harmful impacts on the oceans and, of course, increase the conservation. Pass to you, Tasha. Okay, next up. SDG 15 live online, we had an IG live with Ashwarya Sirhar and the three key takeaways are first, educate yourself, learn, 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 learn about what's happening and also learn about the cameras because the next up is grab your cameras, um, professional ones or your phone cameras and take a um, picture of the issues and report to the concerned authorities. Last but, last but not least, be the example. Start implementing the sustainable lifestyle because th change starts with a new. Next up, SDG 16. Yes, I had a lovely conversation with Miss Sarah Moore on peace, justice, and strong institutions. First takeaway is use your own stories. Use the power of storytelling to make sure that your oppressed voices are heard in order to achieve peace, justice, and establish strong institutions. And from there, you can take those stories and make sure that they are represented in the institutions that uphold peace and justice. And finally, look within yourself. Number three, look within yourself because your health and well being ultimately is the biggest revolution against oppression. So there you go. That's SDG 16. And I guess, you know, just whew, that was like a roller coaster right there. No, but, I, was, I was gonna say, like, Essa, let's just take a deep breath because um, for me watching that back, I'm like, wait. Did we just do that in 16 days and today's SDG 17? Yes, we did. Woo! Amazing. I'm so, I'm like, I have a lot of energy, but after this, I'm probably going to take a nap for like the whole night. <laughs> Same, but you know, just like again, a quick recap of the recap. I can tell that there were like you know, and maybe our audience can re, you know can sense it too that there were some common themes, common you know like common threads amongst our the past sixteen days here. And I can I think one is definitely education, like raising awareness about everything, making sure that everyone understands those SDGs and the targets behind it. Of course, the solutions. And I think another one that I got was also collaboration between. NGOs, public sector, private sector, making sure that everyone is involved. And of course, ultimately the last one is partnerships, right? Which I guess is related to collaboration, which relates to today, which you guys can see on the screen, SDG 17, partnership for the goals, right? This is what we're going to talk about today in a round table discussion with the Utopia team. So just a little notice here for the Utopia team, I guess, where we're going to go around, Malati and I, we're going to be kind of moderators of the discussion today and asking you all questions and your thoughts about the SDG and what we all can do, both individually, but also, you know, at the systemic and systemic level and organizations out there can do so that we can achieve partnership and making sure the partnership exists for us to achieve the goals. How about you want to kick off this discussion, Mel? 
I will, I will. And I think also just giving context to what, um, what we just went through, remembering the speakers and their organizations and all of our circle of youth networks at Utopia. Um, you know, think about that when we're answering the very first question of what does partnership really mean to you? Um, what does a good partnership look like? Let's, let's dig deeper into what that feels and looks like for each one of us as young change makers. Who wants to kick it off? I don't mind going. Oh, oh. oh Emma, yes. Oh. Go. <laughs> or Lily. Steal the potato here. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, um, I think one of my biggest takeaways is um, to not leave anyone behind. And I feel like this is a lot of um, questions that were asked throughout our unite is that how do we make sure that no one gets left behind? Um, so I think partnership means to me is like to take everyone into account those marginalized big corporations, um, like, yeah, everyone in the picture, everyone should be and has to be in the picture to move forward in achieving all the 17 goals. Nailed it. I feel like, Emma, you may, I, you brought in the entire point and purpose of the 17 SDGs, right? Leaving no one behind. And for those of you that have been following us for the last 17 days, Lane, you, you mentioned it in your comment. This is a common narrative that every single young change maker that we've brought on as a speaker has been like, we have to have this and it, it, it involves collaboration, it involves partnership. Okay, who else? Lily, you, you unmuted yourself. Yeah, so partnership to me, I think collaboration is really at the heart of it, especially when we're talking about SDGs and these goals. It's not something that just like one country or one person can solve. It's really like a global issue. And because of that, partnership is so important in collaboration because there are so many different stakeholders involved in it and that there's no way that one person can just fix it. And that's why it's a joint effort, not just on a government level, on a societal level, but on an, on an individual level as well. Love it. Thank you, Lily, for that. I mean, again, that it really resonates with what all the takeaways have been for the past uh, 16, 16, yes, nowadays, I mean, 16 days. It really resonates with what Emma said earlier. Again, leaving no one behind, not just, you know, being involved with NGOs and at the institutional level, but at the end of the day, again, what Praise said, firm climate action change starts with yourself. Individual change matters as well. Let me, is there anyone else who wants to take this hot potato? I actually would yet. like to just jump in there. As Go for it. What you were saying about all of us being there, I think support was such a big thing that I saw throughout the entire Unite. You know, we had 11 year olds joining the call. We had a wide variety of people, but I think the fact that we are all here to support each other and to support our world and our communities, that's what this is all about. And knowing that we have people like shoulders to lean on, people to rely on, it makes us more powerful as youth in general. And that's the whole, again, purpose, point, visualization, heartbeat of Utopia, where we really want to become that headquarters for young change makers around the world. And that's why what we do is so, I'm so happy that all of you joining get to meet these guys, like the team that just pulls everything together and makes everything spicy. Um, Nora, do you have any insight on what a good partnership looks like? I mean, you're doing an incredible study right now in Netherlands. Um, what have you sort of seen or heard or even watching Unite? Uh, we heard partnerships, uh, sorry, what do you think a good partnership means? Um, well, I'm studying global sustainability science at the university in Utrecht. Um, and um, I'm now in my first year, so still the start. Um, but I think partnership is really important, especially also because um, there is a huge knowledge gap. There is a lot of inequality um, um, in knowledge, but also in like um, economical terms and um, standards of living, everything. And um, I think we should um, collaborate and then combine the social and the science and then we can solve the problems. It's not just a scientific issue or um, e economical issue or it's everything. So, and I think if we combine um, all the knowledge that everyone has around the world, then um, we can solve the problems that the world is facing nowadays. 
Thank you, Nora. I think um, you brought up a good point of narrative. Again, so who said this? In one of our SDGs, I can't remember, but it was like, we're in a communication crisis, not only a climate crisis. Who remembers? Bly, SDG 13, instantly. There we go. I was yeah. like, yeah, that was like, that was one of the Love quotes. It. I'm sure we all have this. It'd be interesting, Asta, to go, you know, through this, like what the key quotes or like takeaways and like messages we all remember. Because that, that one, we're in a communication crisis, not only a climate crisis. That one stuck with me a lot because I always talk about you know, there's a narrative gap, nor you just brought up like people not understanding these large, these massive terms that we're all using. And I think, um, you know, in, in partnerships, it's acknowledging the different levels that come with different partners and making sure that we're not leaving anyone behind, that we're inclusive. Um, awesome. Anybody else? Do we have anyone? Otherwise, we jump to the second question. All right, Asa, you kick it off with the next question. Oh, good. All right, so the next question we've, again, we've touched upon, we've touched upon that, right? That disparity, which I think is a, a barrier that we really need to get across and really solve in order to leave no one behind and achieve our targets. What do you guys think are the barriers aside from that that prevents us to create and establish more partnerships across countries, NGOs, companies, and all stakeholders involved? Ria, what do you think? Um, okay, first thing that comes to mind is pride. I feel like we live in a society that glorifies lone wolf types, you know? Um, I acknowledge that it's commendable if you do something alone. Um, there's like more pride in that, I guess. But to the point where society is like, this is the way to go. And when you do it as a team, it's like, oh, you only did that because you had help. But it doesn't make it any less valid. So I feel like a lot of companies, a lot of people in power, they, they, they want to do it like, I did that. I started this initiative. It's always an I, it's never a we. You know, so I think that's one. And then another thing is ignorance. So many people are aware of what's happening in the world. They just choose not to do anything about it, which is so frustrating, uh, especially calling out to the, um, like the more popular brands out there and the institutions and stuff like that. It's like they have blinders on, you know? It's like they choose to see, or rather choose not to see the effect that they could do to the world. You know, it's like, heaven forbid, I distribute some of my profits to this institution, to this NGO, you know? It's like very profit driven. But yeah, those are the things that kind of come to my mind. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, Ria, the way we call it is like the elephant in the room, right? That's what this question kind of forces us to look at. Who else has another barrier or something that prevents us from seeing more partnerships coming into life? I think I can go. I, it kind of is very linked to what Rhea said, but again, with like being selfish, um, I feel with partnerships, different parties may have different personal interests. And so they're worried that, you know, potential partnerships might be zero sum. So what they do collaboratively, only one gains from and one loses. And therefore they are afraid of being, I guess, the loser. So I feel that is a barrier, um, just different personal interests. Um, yeah. I can see that. <laughs> yeah, it's that common thread of more significance to me than we. And um, it's, it's also, I mean, let's use the big word, ego, right? And, and I do think that there's also, uh, I think ego is a massive taboo. Um, you know, people are always like, if you have a big ego, you're like, you know, gone and nobody wants to have a conversation with you. But if you have no ego, that doesn't exist as well. Um, but it's the way that you play into it and the way that you empower your local community and the, the people around you, your team. I think this is also another common thread and I'm going off on a bit of a tangent, but empowering your team, empowering those around you, that's another common thread that every young change maker, part of Utopia Unite said, you know, this is a simple way of how we can get more partnerships because as soon as we empower, we're listening. This is how we can get more partnerships because as soon as we empower, we're creating a space where it's okay to share other perspectives. What, what, it, what, it, why, what are some other people's thoughts on why we're not seeing more partnerships, more effective partnerships? What's the- I just wanna slide in here, Mel, actually. Oh, and I think please. that one thing that I would say is that people sometimes don't know where to start when it comes to partnerships. I feel like that's a big thing for when you look at people like 
I mean, Mel, when I met you and I looked at you, I was like, oh my gosh, how did she do that at the age of so young? I mean, what? That's so inspiring. But I mean, I can't, I'm just one person, you know? And I feel like that thought comes without, you know, everyone feels like that at some point, just not knowing where to begin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like that's definitely a border. That's true. So team, we have a next to-do list to make a Utopia Masterclass on partnerships. I think that's something that's really clear alongside all of our other masterclasses. Again, Utopia's main purpose and point is to create peer-to-peer um, programs. So I think this is something we can add to our bucket list for sure. Um, what else? That's really good, Maya. What Maybe jumping on of, off of this topic, let's jump to another question kind of off of the, 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 the list of questions we had, but curious to hear some key takeaways from any of you. Uh, what were some coping mechanisms that you heard from change makers? Because there's something that's quite often when it comes to the space of creating partnerships, creating momentum, creating movements, young change makers face a burnout quite quickly right um what are some coping mechanisms that you've learned and feel like related to you or like you know resonated with you in a way that that's how you also find a way to deal with everything i think i can go on this one i was actually just thinking about it um just now when i was scrolling through utopia's instagram page and um i actually saved Anne's um sdg9 live because at one point of time she mentioned like you have to find your why and your purpose and be it anything you embark on or anything that you do you have to always come back um, come back to like the core reason why you're doing it and that's always like the motivation for you to continue and in the first place to even start and I think that's what re really resonated with me. And it made me think about what's my why in life and what is my purpose? Because we can go about saying we wanna solve the world's problems, but realistically, if you really zoom in and focus on the specific area that you are really passionate about, you'll be able to affect more change. And yeah. Agreed. I think just you know, again, sliding in here and kind of jumping off of what Lily answered um, to your question Mel, about coping mechanisms. I don't know if this is kind of a coping mechanism but maybe rather kind of a, solu a solution-ish -ish almost. But what I think a key takeaway that I think someone mentioned this in climate action to a lot of memorable uh, moments from SDG 13, check it out on our YouTube, um, is that it's really good to surround yourself with like-minded people. Like again, like here, I'm so grateful to have such a supportive team in Utopia where everyone is like-minded. And even though maybe not all of us are, you know, have the same perspective and whatnot, but again, we're a support system. We empathize, we understand one another, but it's really great once you seek out, really step out of your box a little bit, seek out organizations and people that might be interested in the same causes as you, there a partnership maybe can be formed, whether it be an official kind of MOU technical kind of partnership, but also friendships and relationships and whatnot that can really grow your horizon a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I just want to stick to the, the coping thing before we move back into partnerships. Arum and Praise, we haven't heard from you. What are some ways or um, tips that you heard from key change makers throughout Unite? Yeah, I think I can go on that. Uh, on SDG4 in quality education, uh, Iman said about the being adaptable. I think this is really important for partnership. You know, uh, also in our utopia, we are really adaptable. We, we hope not, not from our value, but we have universal value. We have the common value for uh, partnership. If we just belong to one value, like you know, in the country, we just belong to the Western value or Asian value on this uh, partnership, it will not work. So I think the one of the biggest important thing in, in partnership is we have the shared value or the common value to the, to achieve the sustainable development goal number seventeen. Thank you. All right, I think I can go. <laughs> uh, what I learned from, especially from SDG sixteen, is the importance of story. So yeah, just encourage ourselves to share the stories between our peers, between our friends, and say that say something that we are really experiencing. If we are if we are too afraid to go like on the street or to push the government to voice out our thoughts, then try to share something with our yeah you know, like beloved ones or our friends or or our our close friends to about something that we see, about something that we experience, or what we want to achieve. Um, to address this issue. So I think that's also also important. And building up on what Asta said as well, the have empathy because it's also the key to build the partnership. So just to build the bridge, not the wall. Yeah, build the bridge, not the wall. 
Um, and this is also kind of moving to the next question on a more systemic level, because again, throughout Unite, and for those of you that have been joining, it's like we tried to divide it by creating a change maker to do list on you as an individual person, but also on a more systemic level, on an industrial level. What do big companies, big corporations, and what do governments need to be changing in order to accelerate the SDGs? For SDG 17, specifically on partnerships, what do you guys think is key or what is missing from these big stakeholders in order to move forward with more partnerships? Doesn't have to be a smart like answer. I know that like all of us are like learning in SDG 17, but just also again, put in context what you heard throughout the last 16 days. I can. I can. I think I can jump on on this. Um, uh, echoing to Ria's answer, um, for companies, they're still profit centric. I would say so. It, if it doesn't bring profit to them, if if it, um, if it doesn't bring money or some financial value to them, uh, they would consider it or think twice about it. So, yeah, they do have the CSR, but really, um, are most of them really sustainable? So I think that's. Um, I think it's the mindset that should be changed. Um, and yeah. Profit driven, that's a big one. Um, I think a lot of uh, different industries and different players uh, and again, speakers mentioned this. It's again, another elephant in the room. We're being way too profit driven, way too short term thinking. What else? What are some of the other systemic changes that you see are missing or are key in order to create partnerships? Well, Tasia, just adding on what you said, I think a big factor of it is inconvenience or, you know, doing the minimum you can to try to look good on the stage. So it's really about behind the scenes, but I'm not really sure where you would be able to counter that by changing kind of this culture and mindset in, you know, huge corporations. Like, where would you begin for that? I think, I mean, just jumping onto that, and I think this is what the work of a lot of us young change makers have is holding them accountable, right? Because far too many times our companies getting away with a big headline and a great statement, but there's no follow through. No one is holding them accountable enough. That's why they get away with things like this. So I think when it comes to, you know, establishing partnerships, and this is an interesting take on partnerships, but I wonder, and I'm asking you guys as well, I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Do you think it's worth creating partnerships with young startups, young entrepreneurs, with the big bad companies and partner in a way to hold that accountability in place, to make sure that we're in it at the beginning and make sure that the goals are on track, the progress is on track. Do you think that that's a partnership that we should be seeing more of, putting good and evil together? Or do you say, no, let them work it out, let them do it? What, what are your thoughts here? And maybe Noor as well, with your study, uh, you have some interesting input. Well, I wouldn't say that big companies are um, evil per se, um, always. Yeah, it's just you, know, like, you know what I mean? You know, sometimes yeah, it's like, change makers not, like ah. not every big company is evil, <laughs> but I think that um, they can learn from each other and like small startups can learn how to grow and how to um, sort of stay alive in the business world. But um, as being a, being a sustainable uh, small business, um, uh, it is hard to sort of stay alive in the business world uh, without um, uh, losing profit or without, um, uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> but um, I think they can learn this from big companies, but um, they can also influence big companies and try to push their ideas and um, show big companies um, that are not being sustainable that there is a way um, to still make profit um, without being uh, sort of like um, uh, not environmental friendly or um, polluting uh using a lot of pollutants and all that kind of stuff <laughs> so that's what i think <laughs> okay what about anybody else i want to hop on this um i feel like the pairing of a small startup and an evil company quote unquote is I feel like it's not the most ideal just because I'm fearing for the small startup, the bigger companies is going to eat them alive. I feel like they're just going to, at one point or another, if they feel like 
they see them as a competition they're going to just devour them and maybe like buy them out and stuff I feel like the a more ideal is to approach the bigger company with proof and data kind of what with what Nor was saying with proof and data that like hey this is a sustainable way and you still get your money you know like you still get the results that you want and then that's where they're going to be like oh maybe this startup thing is um partnership with a startup is beneficial for me so mm-hmm. yeah okay. super insightful guys um as always throughout the 16 days i've been having this notebook with me upside down i've been having this notebook with me and my pen and paper so just the same with with the team um writing a lot of notes down but um i know we're we're like or oh, coming to uh you know we just have to keep an eye on the time uh, but I did want to create a short shout out for our audience that is here tonight. If you would like, instead of a Q&A session, we are also doing a, we would like to kind of switch it up and have you unmute yourself, share your video and give us a little insight on what you felt Unite was for you, how you experienced it, what you really enjoyed. I know there's some comments um, in uh, questions in the comment section. So we'll address that um, now because I think we, we, we dove into the part of like industry and whatnot. And some other we went off on a tangent a little but um jessica here you're asking you know may i know how utopia to be exact helps on partnership technically with new change makers um i think the way that i could answer this and anybody feel free to jump in um i feel like how we can uh, showcase this is really through our circle of youth network um so these are individual change makers that have their own project their own track record of change and we onboard them to our circle of youth network and this is you can say it's a partnership it's more like a collaboration between utopia and the change maker and their project and it's where we um, want to share as many opportunities as possible whether it's one of our eight services at utopia for one beat for example is our utopia voices our speaking agency where we uh, help them professionally uh, become a speaker but also gain access to uh, network and uh, gigs. We have uh, opportunities to create programs with us um, virtually through our Utopia masterclasses. We have a, another way, another route of collaboration uh, with our circle of youth and Utopia, which is um, when we do physical, hopefully soon again, physical workshops and hands-on um, learning where we do it locally on the ground with a local circle of youth members. So that's kind of, um, I hope, Jessica, giving you kind of an understanding with uh, some specific uh, ways and more also general ways of how Utopia again, really mobilizing this space in this community for young change makers to come together and also finding the strengths of every person. Maybe not every young change maker is a good speaker, so not everybody will join the speaking agency, but some are really great educators when it's a, a specific um, training that they're doing. So we do that kind of collaboration. So that's how we partner with young people. And I think Kathleen, it answers a couple of your questions as well. Um, but I'm just gonna touch on point one. You ask, what partnerships are you building currently at Utopia? The circle of youth is one example on a more individual peer-to-peer -peer way, but we are also focusing on partnerships with larger corporations and larger, um, how do I say it, businesses. Um, for example, our headquarters that we just opened um, earlier this week, was only possible through partnerships and through collaborations. I see Tasya and Praise, the uh, two that are here on Bali, smiling because we have the most amazing headquarters. We're gonna be posting more about it. We're just waiting till the end of Unite, but that was only possible through partnerships. Um, for example, we got our entire furniture um, sponsored by Ikea um, and- uh, they well, Are we filming it now? I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just teasing it now. Don't worry. The whole campaign, Tasia is like media trailblazer, right? So she's like, wait, 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 I saw you and I was like, should I stop? But I was too far into it, girl. Um, anyways, sponsored by Ikea and it was super exciting. Uh, all of their sustainability line. We showcase again, 16 Bali-based businesses um, that showcase solutions from um, you know, trash barriers of Sungai Watch to sustainable sunscreen of Thank Me Later, Indosol from sustainable footwear. So this is the way that we want to, again, showcase uh, and be a platform to really um, empower all of these solutions forward. Um, what kind of initiative projects do you want to be growing in 2021? Um, lots of things. We're going to release our calendar of 2021 very soon before Christmas. Um, we're just securing a couple partnerships and a couple of um, 
key workshops and master classes that we'll be releasing. So it's gonna be very exciting. Team, stop me from talking, please, someone else <laughs> come on board. And um, yeah, what was I gonna, what, where are we at? Esta, give me a quick update. <laughs> Again, I think you, you've covered it all. You've covered it all again, answering the questions from Kathleen and also from Jessica. But I don't know if, if, if I want, I just wanted to add a little bit on the answer of that. I don't know if we can mention Circle of Warfare. <laughs> did you, did yes, you catch yeah. it? Yes, yes. I think that's also a key. <laughs> that's also key in, you know, again, with partnerships. And I think a lot of people, when you think, when you hear, oh, Utopia, it's all about youth. And, of, and it is 100%, right? It's youth-led, youth-driven youth for youth, peer-to-peer -peer education, but we also value intergenerational cooperation and partnerships too, which is reflected in our circle of wisdom. So circle, of, we have our circle of youth, but we also have our circle of wisdom. We call it, you know, our advisors and really those who have years and years of experience in their own industries to really guide us and provide us, you know, advice and the blueprint on how we can move things forward with Utopia as well. I just wanted to add a little bit on that, Malati. Anyone else? Maybe our media trailblazer, anything to add a little bit of flavor into the answers? Um, oh, sorry, I was updating the IG story. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I think for Utopia, we have so many things that we want to uh, present and we want to give to you. So please, 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 please stay tuned. We are revealing as one of Lati has already spilled earlier. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> we have a very exciting uh, collaborations with um, IKEA and also other big, big companies that you may think, um, this is a touching of our, uh, our previous discussion, like big companies with startups, you know? So yeah, stay tuned. We have so many um, amazing surprises and things for you for the upcoming, so. Woo! And um, touching a little bit before going into uh, the audiences, Raquel, just shout out to you. I would love to actually have you unmute yourself and share your video with us. You wrote such a touching comment. Um, but just next steps for Utopia, what we're doing, um, you know, we're currently in our seed funding round and closing that. Um, we're securing our fund, uh, our partnerships, and we are also um, letting uh, our calendar of 2021 uh, released in the next week or so um, with all of the amazing treats for you. So keep an eye out for that. And then Raquel, I already see you are here with us. Tell us how was Unite and what did it make you feel? How did you experience it? Okay, so um, it was actually really cool to see how you could learn from so different in so different subjects. Uh, sorry, I'm super nervous. So I'm kind of like trying to process it in my head and what I'm gonna say but, um, but yeah it was really cool learning from so many different people who work in different fields and have different passions um, and it was actually really cool now that we're doing um, the partnership uh, how everybody in every single day they talked about partnership so I thought that was really interesting actually and it was really cool to learn from that Perfect. Can, um, Raquel, can I ask you a quick question? How many um, SDGs did you join us for? Uh, actually, 17. What? Okay, so I actually fell asleep for a bit during one of them, but uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was so tired. It was like 3 a.m. Oh my God. Oh, that's dedication, though. The 3 a.m. part lifted my spirits again because I thought, oh, you have to tell us what. <laughs> but um, thank you so much for taking the time and committing to Utopia. Please do keep an eye out for any of our upcoming um, other Absolutely. events. We've got a lot of things lined up and where we're, we already listed you as one of our top utopians. Oh, that's actually really sweet. <laughs> Thank you, Raquel. Okay, um, who else wants to unmute and share video? I, I think I see another loyal utopian here, Balgista in the audience who's Ooh. been making these amazing story recaps. Girl, we see you. I know. We really have the fun. best stories. We're a huge fan, right? So <laughs> why don't you, okay, I see you now. Let me unmute you, unmute yourself and tell us, you know, what's it like attending Unite and everything, all your lessons learned. Hi guys. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Oh, I'm really shaking right now. Um, you know, you you guys, I just want to say thank you so, so much. You guys have been doing such amazing unites that 
you know, I, at the time I was when I started to, you know, how to become a change maker, <laughs> a young change maker and the utopia really, really, you know, for me, it's really the place to go to start with, to, you know, <laughs> oh my God, I don't know. Keep going. I mean, that's so amazing. Yay, thank you so much, Balgisa. I mean, are you kidding me? All of us have the biggest smiles right now. It's exactly what we want to hear. And all of us have been seeing your um, recaps and also stories, I back to back every day for Instagram yes. stories. Exactly. So aesthetic, so like well noted. Um, we actually want to reach out to you and do a collab maybe on releasing the notes that you wrote for uh, Unite. So maybe that's a cool way that we can start a partnership just like that. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like that? For sure. Yes. Hey. DMs, girl. <laughs> we'll, we'll slide right in, all right? Okay, perfect. Thank you so much, Balgista. Thank you so much, you guys. <laughs> I think I have um, Isabel on the line as well. She wrote me, she wanted to say just like a little message as well. All right, let's see where she, okay. hey, all right. There you go. Hello, can everybody hear me? Yes, yes we can. We can. <laughs> Hi, um, yeah, so I'm, I, I'm Isabel. For those of you who don't know me, I actually, was a panel speaker on one of the SDGs earlier last week. Um, so I've been a part of Utopia, you know, following along with the panels, learning so much more. And it's just been a really fun way for me to see, you know, Malati's vision and the entire Utopia team, you know, the vision really coming together, seeing people from all over the world joining in. Um, even myself, you know, who's been an activist and, you know, trying to keep active and, you know, educate myself as much as I can on the SDGs and what's happening around the world. I think Utopia really allowed me to, you know, centralize where I was getting the information from and sort of make it a lot easier to still hear different voices and different perspectives, but going to one place rather than, you know, freaking out about, oh my God, what, what, what where do I go to learn this? Do I know that this is true? You know, how all of these sorts of stuff. So I do want to say thank you to the Utopia Team Pro. So allowing me to be a part of that um and yeah thanks to also everybody you know who is constantly coming to watch and join the utopia unite events there's going to be more like the entire team have been saying there's going to be more coming up so hopefully you guys can join in that um and yeah i think utopia unite was this amazing kickoff of chain of events that have happened so yeah yay we love you bell um for those of you that don't know bell is also my sister and mm -hmm. she's 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 far away right now in her little. I moved out. Moved out. She moved out. Really it's dirty. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> nice to see you, Belle, and thank you for that. Um, also, you did great on SDG 13. It was so nice to have you on our panel discussion. Next is to have you in our office in the H HQ every now and then. Yes. All right. Um, is there maybe one more another person that wants to unmute and share a video? I think I see Lane here. I've seen his name a lot throughout the 17 days. And even in our Utopia talks, I've noticed Lane a lot. So maybe Lane, would you like to start your video, unmute yourself and share some lessons learned and your thoughts like on Unite and Utopia? Hi guys, I'm in a car, so it's a bit dark. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. I am <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> So I'm, I'm part of the older generation you were referring to, and I'm 54 years old, grew up in America, I've been living in Europe for 10 years, and then Asia for 20. And I tell you, I've sat on the board of trustees of public companies, many private companies. I just want to share with the entire team, I'm incredibly inspired with what you put together over 17 days. It was highly informative, impact-driven. Um, very naturally presented and curated. I just want to tell you that you should all be extremely proud of yourselves. You really are the change makers of the future. And whether we're talking about going up against big government or the public sector and making a voice be heard between the guests that you brought to the table and between all of yourselves as individuals sending out the messages and the, the content. And it was just 
really, really impactful. And I want to really tell you, I'm grateful and I'm going to get more involved. And I hope to come visit y'all at the headquarters and, and talk about how I can support in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lane. That was such an empowering message. Thank you so much for joining. I saw you join for 17 days as well. I did. Um, here and, and, and you have us on, on and on a drive in the car. So that's that is dedication on a whole other level. Um, thank you very much. Well we really appreciate it and are very grateful. And yeah, come by anytime. Um, is there Hello. anyone? Thank you, Lane. Do we have anyone else or shall we wrap up day 17 guys? Are we here? I think, I think that is all, that's crazy. Should we take a group, again, traditional group photo here? Yes. Everyone, let's. Oh, very last one. Terima kasih everybody. Good night from Bali. Thank you everybody. Hey guys. How you doing? We've got news. For you. It's the end of. Unite. But. The beginning. Of. You Utopia! Utopia! Yeah! <laughs>